our intention for the very first day end chronic hunger and malnutrition in Africa, which causes stunting. So the African Orphan Crops Consortium, in trying to address this problem of stunting, these nutritional issues, spent three years choosing the top 100 crops that provided nutrients, that provided vitamins, micronutrients, and antioxidants. This is a very ambitious program to sequence, assemble, and annotate the genomes of 101 crops, crops that haven't been studied before. We're gonna train 150 to 200 cohorts, the best plant spitters in Africa, to take this information from the sequencing and resequencing we're doing to breed new lines of more nutritious plants. Here we go. This machine is one of ours that is open to every sort of possible application, and that means you can do everything from what we call shotgun sequencing, which is taking all the DNA sample, cutting it up, and sequencing it all. You can go in and sequence targeted regions from a sample, or you could look at all the RNA that's been expressed in a particular cell or in a particular tissue, and the machine can sequence that also. We were fortunate to have Ryan Rapp come and make a presentation he saw what we were doing, and we began this dialogue. What would happen if you had a high seek 4,000? I quickly did some numbers. We would have 16 times more capability, 16 times. At the rate of the machines I had, I thought it would take me 17 years to complete the work. With this machine, maybe three years, maybe four years if we're efficient. It's, it's a startling change of capability. A sequence tells you on certain chromosomes, information is encapsulated. Drought resistance is over here. Higher profile nutrition is over here. Disease resistance is over here. Yield is over here. That's, that's just the backbone. You still have to go out, find the parent lines, the male and the female, make the crosses, make back crosses. All the time you can resequence to see if the work you have done has captured that desired trait. I've got a good yielder yes. and I've got a good disease resistant line. Okay. The yield in this line, not so good. The disease resistance in this line, not so good. Is that a good bite of cross? This has nothing to do with genetically modified in organisms or genetic engineering. It's using the natural variation that has evolved over the last uh, 600 million years. It's really all about the plant breeders that create the new cultivars. We empower them by actually teaching them how to use DNA sequence information in their breeding programs to the greatest advantage. If I really sang well, I would sing Oh Happy Day. Uh, because today is one of those occasions where only words that are that expressive and enthusiastic really mean anything. We got involved because it was the right thing to do. We recognized the impact that genetics could have on these crop species to really drive food security and nutrition across the continent. By placing this machine here in Africa, um, we're hoping to enable the region with one of our most powerful sequencing instruments and now the most powerful sequencing instrument on the continent um, to really drive that mission forward. When the question is asked, when will the crop start to appear? three and a half, four years for a new variety. But we're not working on one variety. The cohorts of the class are already working on 66 to 70 varieties. In 10 years, this will be the fundamental basis for, for the Africa food system, this 101 crops that we're working on.